Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can create a CC3 Plus stylized character using Headshot 2.0. On the screen right now we have a stylized goblin head mesh and what we're going to do is bring it to life with facial animation and give it a body in just a few minutes. Let's start off in Headshot by selecting the head and clicking Start Head Generation, which will lead us to the first step where we'll need to set the facial marker points to align the facial features. When using auto detection with stylized characters, Headshot may have difficulty finding the correct marker placement, and so you'll see this notification. In this case, it's not camera placement, but rather unconventional facial proportions that are causing the issue. Therefore, we need to do some manual adjustment here and add additional points. I'll start by aligning the points properly around the eyes, ensuring that the marker numbers and positioning are consistent between both sides. The outer brow markers need to be added, so simply click them in order and they will be added. The rest of the facial features are pretty simple. You can learn more about basic placement in our Getting Started tutorial or the white paper. Since I have a stylized character here, I want to add additional alignment points as well in order to define other features like the ears. Again, start off by clicking at the various points in your source mesh and then proceed to add the same number of points on the reference mesh so character creator can be more accurate with the head creation. Marking areas like the base of the jaw and the center of the top of the head will also help to produce more accurate final results. Since our goblin here has a protruding humpback, we also want to create some more alignment markers on the back of the neck as well to define it better. Finally, since the mouth proportions are also quite different, I'll add a couple more markers there for more accurate reference as well. After that's done, it's on to the head gen AI step, which in this case we don't need to worry about as we're importing in our own mesh. So let's move on to the refine mesh step, which in this case requires a bit of work. The project brush can be used to conform the generated mesh more closely to the original, and the smooth brush can subsequently be used to even out the geometry of our generated head for better animated results. The unique ears on this character require that we use the move brush in addition to smooth to get the shape as accurate as possible. The neck is also a little tricky here, so we can deselect keep borders and then use project to push out the mesh just a little bit further. Before moving on, ensure that keep neck shape is checked in the output mesh shape section so we can maintain the unique shape. Let's then attach to body, choose our body type with no mask, and bake our diffuse and normal map from the source mesh. In this case, we're only using a 2K texture. Our character will generate with the default male body, which in this case will look super strange. In the Morph tab of the Modify panel, you can find hundreds of morph sliders, which will allow you to adjust various groups of proportions all the way down to minute details. We can make some minor adjustments to the limbs of our character to get some initial proportions right. To learn more about the morph sliders in Character Creator, please check out the dedicated tutorial. After I've adjusted those, then I can move on to the Attributes tab and click on Proportion, which is where we can adjust specific bone sizes. Finally, we can assume that not many goblins have perfectly manicured nails, so let's go to the actor slash nails folder structure to find some embedded nail templates and apply the one that looks most goblin-y. If you search nail in the morphs tab, you'll also find some parameters there that you can adjust, and we can also adjust the color and roughness in the materials tab as well. To test out the functionality of the body animation, enable the animation player at the top and then choose from one of the test motions in the timeline menu at the bottom. From the animation tab, you can find the edit facial tool, which will allow you to test out the results of individual facial muscles one by one. You can also choose to load in template expressions here to see them in combination and customize said expressions. You can learn more about facial animation in the various tutorials from our Reillusion courses page. 
You can do many more adjustments and customizations on your character, but we'll end off this basic tutorial for now. I encourage you to experiment with the various customization options explored in other tutorials, and I'll see you in the next video.